to the bot lane if you need to. That allows someday to play weak side on champions that he's proficient on and then come together as a group. This is exactly what 100 Thieves envisioned when this roster was put together. And finally now we're starting to see it come together, especially with the new coaching staff. All right, we're next in ban. Least in ban by 100 Thieves kind of means you're priced into banning Akali on the red side. So that is what happens. EG at Varus to their two enchanter bans on their side. That does leave Gwen open as the first pick for EG. And we're counting the clock down to Rumble here for 100 Thieves. So uh, Abadaga is going to have to show us a new champion crumbs, which we love to see. That is exciting. That is very interesting to see what else he's got. I have full confidence, though, that his third champion down the line will be very good. It's Thus far, he's been really impressive. Although I fear for 100 Thieves here, Pastry. Gwen just did a number on Dignitas. Uh, this pick, if Impact or Jazuka can play well, can be so incredibly damaging. I'm curious to see where it will go more than anything. Gwen seems to have been really taken over by the top laner, but I just saw a video today with Gwen solo clearing jungle at 3.06. So she can be a very relevant jungler as well. Obviously, she doesn't have amazing gank prowess, but the pick is quite flexible. I mean, if you get gold, it's all you need. It's <laughs> when it feels like. Yeah. Just get to two items and have a grand old time. Uh, dueling both minions and enemy champions. Ezreal, though, the pick up there for EG. Now is an interesting one for 100 Thieves, picking that one up nice and early. Basically only a Sunday champion, can't get anywhere else, so perhaps wanting it up against the Gwen, but as you mentioned, EG can flex the Gwen around as well. We've seen it mostly top. I can see it mid, can see it jungle as well, although we haven't seen that yet in the LCS at least. Clock counting down though for EG as I'll take Udyr as the jungle left. Kind of conspicuously open, but with the Ganley's enchanters and these assassins needing to be banned away, uh, Udyr and Rumble will once again be traded. Yeah, Udyr with the Ezreal will be pretty annoying to deal with. They both get very tanky, so making sure that they have at least survivability to get away from Rumble. You can either have the Karma to just shield you away or just be really beefy and mobile. And that's what these two champions can provide. Combined with Gwen, they can also turn it on and go in and the just flick of a button. So I think that Udir for Svenskaren should be a pretty good pick for him since one of the things that is often criticized about him is that sometimes you're going in a little bit too deep. But on Udir, it's kind of hard to do so because you really see yourself going into enemy fire and then you can just choose to continue to go in or back off. It's not a pick like Sinzao where you press a button and suddenly you're in the middle of everything. You ran there, you waddled your feet over, so you know how far you should go. All right, well, Lucian bans here for 100 Thieves. Kaiser actually the last pick in phase one there for 100 Thieves. So setting up FBI once again, but curious what the rest of these bans will look like. I feel like I have Thresh on the brain because of uh, Udi, especially actually. We saw that a lot when Udi was even more popular than he is now. I know that's very hard to believe. But uh, Spring 2021, uh, Udi Thresh was a pretty popular combo. would be okay here uh, alongside the Ezreal, but maybe Ezreal on something like uh, a range support to kind of bully. Maybe any support. Ezreal's so self-sufficient that you can kind of play whatever you feel like. Nautilus is going to get banned away from Kai'Sa. That's been a, a constant combination in the 2v2s. I like the Nautilus ban so much, not just because of the Kai'Sa as a 2v2, but also with the Rumble. That actually makes Rumble so much more powerful to be able to have an incredible equalizer on a target like an Ezreal. He just would not stand a chance against us since he is prioritizing physical damage with his Frozen Heart. So making sure that he does not get instantly mauled by those two ultimates will keep Danny alive. It's something that we've just been discussing behind the scenes is the 2v2 combination that you can build seem to be so much more important in the game right now. The Kai'Sa and the Nautilus were one, but the Rumble with the Nautilus and essentially any other major crowd control is going to be so good at amplifying his damage. Gnar is one of them, and then with the Leona, you don't necessarily have that point and click, but if you land those stuns, the damage is still done. Yeah, I think uh, we talked about set backstage or something that Immortals used a great effect in their opening week alongside Xerxes Rumble. So I like the Leona here for who he makes a lot of sense in the 2v2, but also does combo well with the Rumble because you do kind of need to set up Rumble. But I feel like when Rumble gets two kills in an early game, the game is over. When Rumble gets no kills, game is significantly <laughs> harder to win as Jace is going to be the lock in here for EG. That's going mid lane, I have to assume. So 100 Thieves will get their counter pick there in mid unless uh, it has been the long con and Abadaga has been wanting to play mid rumble this entire time, which I don't think is the case. 
Well, he will have last pick, so he can always choose. And against the Jace, so this is going to be a firecracker of a mid lane matchup because Jace for Jazuke, he's a pretty good laner. So it could mean that Abadaga can struggle here. And it's not necessarily the pick that really wants to put himself in the front line. Obviously, you can just jump into the enemy, but your Shock Blast will be a priority here with the poke that you have with Ezreal, the EG lineup really just wants to keep their distance, disengage, and then once they're whittled down or somebody's isolated, then they can quickly pounce. All right, looks like, yep, Orianna instead. Silas was interesting. They don't have that many good ults to steal. But Orianna, pretty safe, pretty standard here. Abadaga, obviously known for many picks. I think Orianna certainly up there. I think it's something that basically every mid laner at this point, if you've been playing yeah. for a certain amount of time, you've probably played a lot of games with Orianna. And uh, it's going to make for a deadly team fighting comp out of 100 Thieves here. There is a ton of setup and a lot of damage too. So EG will want to get ahead early and keep that advantage. Maybe start stacking those dragons if they can because 100 Thieves will always be relevant with the amount of Wombo that they have. A lot of these ultimates can set up an equalizer and just have a long range engage. Nar with the Stride Breaker can be surprisingly effective at catching members by themselves. And then with Kai'Sa flying in, Leona and even Equalizers, they can just win a fight out of nowhere. And there's not a lot of disengage on the hundred, on the EG side here. Yeah, I think the, the thing though is unfortunately for the fans, bad news at mid lane, not an interesting on the 100 Thieves side. Yeah. He's going <laughs> to be trying to survive the onslaught of just of Jazuke's Jace getting in there as often as he can in the 1v1. But as always, the jungle matchup is going to be very important and a fun one to watch here as well. The most interesting thing about mid lane Jace to me is always seeing him get gold and then just watching those shock blasts hit and just gauging how much damage did he do? Oh, wow, that's a lot of damage. That's that's a really impressive Jace right now. And just watching him hit that poke because that's often what his job is. You are totally okay having a game that is fairly slow paced as long as you hit that big poke that prevents the enemy from having these strong engages. If you can just start stacking objectives that way, you've done your job as the Jace. If only you could load money into the cannon, yeah. right? <laughs> you no, know, it's a common trope in a lot of RPG. would be the best team in the world. That's true. In a lot of RPG games, though, you can only pay money to do damage. <laughs> Jace would be pretty fun, right? Just kind of putting coins in the top of the hammer, shooting it out. The more gold you invest, the more damage you've done. I mean, that's kind of how it works, right? The more gold you get, the better items you buy, the better your Jace poop becomes. We are finding ourselves in the final game of week number two. Crumbs, my goodness, there are so many games to split. Time flies by, but we love to see it, especially this split with how much variety has happened. It felt like in spring we were kind of drawing stale with some of the jungle picks, some of the mid lane Ooh. picks. We kind of saw a lot of the same things, but now there are teams just experimenting left, right, and center. It feels like every matchup you have an opportunity to just see something new, and especially with the addition of two champions. Well, if you want to only watch one matchup, you can for free. Mid lane there, Pro View is available between Dezuka and Abadaga. You can watch, uh, uh, there's one free matchup every single game. This one's a pretty nice one. Yeah. Matchup maybe not as uh, exciting as the analyst says would have asked for. We didn't get Diego Akali for the possible two Callies. Uh, instead, it's just going to be Oriana vs. Jace, but still a lot of fun there. Uh, really cool to watch how these players navigate those matchups. As Impact did wander in briefly, knows where uh, Close is. Is starting on the red side of their jungle, so top to bot for him. And he's going to be the opposite side there for Svenskeren. His Impact get into that lane nice and early, and someday, I think, correctly avoiding the level yeah. one Gwen. He watched the last game. He <laughs> saw what happened. He knows. He, he does not want to lose this matchup, and he just wants to have some minion aggro, but Impact just goes oh, directly so far up. That's already some XP missing from Someday. He missed that first creep. Yeah, he did get the grass proc, so a little bit back there. Someday did want to make sure he got that off at least, because in mini form, he can try and outrange the Gwen. It's actually not that... Much more. I think now it's 400 range, and uh, Ian powered Gwen is 300, doubling her 150. So kind of tricky, but not a navigate. I've all see how the matchup plays out Sunday. Obviously, I expected this to be his matchup, so this is his counter pick in his 1v1. Whereas Abadaga here up against Jazuke. Uh, gonna have to deal with this for a lot of the landing phase. Minions running into the tower. I do think it will be somewhat of an exciting matchup, especially for mid laners, not just because of the caliber of the mid laners, but just to see what they actually prioritize, whether it's just shoving each other out or looking for roams. And just being able to last it well is actually just such an impressive thing out of the mid lane. It's gonna be really important for these guys to maintain their farm numbers very high since that is what is going to be expected of them. I don't have time for it right now, Kramas, but I will say I think people constantly undervalue how much, how interesting and intricate you know, even control mage versus control mage can be. Even Azir, maybe one of my <laughs> least favorite. Oh, you're going far. <laughs> even Azir, Crumbs. 
can be made interesting. Post six Azir, very exciting. I, I'll give you that one. At level six, his shuffles, but thus far in this matchup, Abadag has already done a fine job. He's going to shove out Jazuke out of the laning phase. Doesn't seem like he's taken a lot of damage, and Jazuke will just recall and. We'll see if he chooses to teleport back to the lane. He will. Ooh, the tier. So Aggressive. Goodbye. All right, well, has the, the potion refill, which is really what you want there. Abadaga actually out of charge as well, but does have a biscuit alongside Jazuke. So sustain will be a big battle here in mid lane as expected. Ward down there for Spence Garano is checking out the Raptor camp, but sees that there is nothing there. Already new closer started on the top side from the early invade out of impact, so no surprises that the bottom lane is being worked towards. But I don't think closer has too much interest in trying to dive the tower here, although you never know. Uh, often a feature of uh, 100 Thieves game's early last split was lots of FBI and who he dives. But this matchup, also a fun one to watch out. Sunday feeling pretty good right now, has a big wave stacked up though towards. So going impact, gonna catch up on CS pretty quickly here. What's interesting with all of these solo lane matchups is that neither really has kill pressure on the other unless they actually want to all in because they're keeping their distance really far away. They can both disengage fairly effectively. So I don't think that with jungler or without jungler intervention, they're gonna put themselves in harm's way. Something can always so pop away. so many snips, man, Sunday. I mean, it's about to go Mega 2. This is actually really nice from Impact, right? Because I think Mega Nar is not going to have very much fun getting kited out by a Gwen this early on. So, so Impact's like kind of playing aggressive, and he knows if somebody tries to fight him, he's going to transform and then not have the range advantage anymore. So I like what Impact's doing here, keeping the pressure on, getting those max range snips there with the E plus Q combo, resetting the uh, skip and slash, I think it's called. Uh, Gwen E getting that cooldown reduced. So nice stuff there is Abadago. Running low on mana, going to have to TP back himself soon. Yeah, but he's going to be fine. He already has a TP advantage over Jazuka, so if he can just hold on to a little bit more, he can start to get some advantages here in this lane, which the 100 Thieves lineup has been doing thus far. Someday, farming effectively, but it looks like we're going to get our first 2v2. Good timing here for Spence Garen, though, to be around Abadaga. He's got no health left alive. Close already flashing over the wall. TP coming in for 100 Thieves, though. And now Spence Garen and Jazuka are going to have to run Someday coming to the rescue. Where is Gwen Impact? Wrong side of the river here for this play. The boss code, though, going to get him out safely as Jazuke will escape. Ooh, something thought about Flash in there. He really thought he had two stacks there on Jazuke, but that would have been his death. Doesn't go for it. There might have been an avenue for Sven Skarin to instantly Flash onto Abadage. I'm thinking maybe Jazuke could actually Flash slam him into the Flash Bear Slap from Sven Skarin, but that kind of coordination is something that you just feel. You can barely communicate that in the heat of the moment. All right, well, someday... Back to the top lane matchup here. He's already TP'd. Impact has not used his. Abadaga also back to mid lane there with his own teleport. So getting out of actually a pretty tricky situation. Uh, Spence Garen had a really nice timing there because Jazuke was pressuring, you know, Ariana's health and mana, knowing that she was going to take the TP anyway. So tried to take advantage of the little window. As it stands, though, it is even on gold and no one has died just yet. So still very close here in these opening minutes. It's close, and yet now 100 Thieves does have an advantage in the top part. And EG has an advantage in the top side, which is Impact does have teleport. So there is an opportunity to make plays either around Dragon or the bottom side or even mid lane if Abadage starts to overextend. That can be the advantage that EG needs to start clawing something in this early game because 100 Thieves, Abadage is farming fine. He's doing a good job in the mid lane, and that's exactly what you want to see out of your Orihana. There's going to be plenty of setup for him, and now he can just start to slowly push off the Jazuka, and you can start to claw an advantage that way, start to mitigate his poke with your own high mana. As you're going with the tier, you just shield yourself from his poke and make that lane much harder for Jace. You know, angle there for closer, but I like the look. He was actually very, very close to level 6, but I think just out of XP range, but if something happened, he could run in, minions would die, and then he'd get six, and then it's a, it's a party in the mid lane. For Jazuke, in a 1v2, he probably doesn't want to be in. Instead, that doesn't happen. First blood is still on the table. But uh, a lot of back and forth here as these teams are setting up. Looks like maybe EG are uh, thinking about this dragon, especially with Danny and Ignite getting that push going in the 2v2. Spence Garen will indeed start this first Drake. Yeah, this is the fine time. You've got Jazuka ready to collapse. He's pathing to the bot side, has a control ward ready to go. And then you also have Impact now catching the wave, so even if he had to TP, he wouldn't miss out anything on the map. So this dragon is one of the most useful early dragons to get just because you get that quick cooldown reduction on your ultimate. And the only one that really won't love that one is going to be Sven Skarin, but the rest of the team will love to have that. Jazuke still lining up here. Shock Blast hits the cost creep. That was overkill, <laughs> but does get the golden XP from it regardless. 
We don't get bonus in this game, unfortunately. Closer. Left hand side. On top of the controller. Again, has the equalizer ratings. Fence going. Moving on through mid lane. Oh. Shockwave gonna miss. Jazuki just went straight through it with a hammer. But still a little bit low. The equalizer damage is good, but it's not enough to take out Jazuki. And now impacts down here in mid lane. He's unpredictably aggressive, is what happened. 100 <laughs> Abu Dhabi is like, there's no way. I got him in the shock blast, with the shockwave rather, and he just instantly jumps, and it actually keeps him alive. This is Jazuka's aggression paying off for him in the laning phase, but now Closer's still looking for it. Both junglers knew that with no flash available for their mid laners, this had to be the area of contest as both supports are now roaming up, and this will deter Svenskeren from going for that Rift Herald. Maybe 100 Thieves sees an opportunity to actually go for this, though, as FBI has rotated up here. Yeah, actually, both teams paying a lot of attention to this potential objective, but it looks like a reset is on the cards instead. Blue buff, I believe, was taken by Svenskaren just then. So Jace will not grab it. In fact, yeah, it must be, because Jazuki is all the way back from base, resetting after the uh, play on his life there in mid. So Danny runs up alongside Ignore. Everyone's going to retool and reset back to their respective ways, but no objective being taken for EG, although... As I say, that's Vinskeren not done with that blue buff he just got. He's going to take out the Drift Tower. Nice little window in the timing there. It will be spotted, and since 100 Thieves moved first, but there was no action, they couldn't just sit around and wait. They had to go back, catch some waves in the bot side, in the mid lane, and so EG, they're already in a better position there. Jazuke gets to roam to the bot side and catch that wave, so they're in a fine state to grab this Dragon, with, or this Herald, rather, without losing much for it. So just being patient and backing off nets them a Rift Herald that can now give them some plates in whichever lane they want to go for. And I think just getting Jazuke more gold will be the most beneficial. He hasn't been farming as well as he should have, but just getting gold into your J, especially early, will make him that much more powerful. The lethality poke is so essential to happen in the beginning of the game. You don't want to be falling behind on this pick. All right, well, they're going to have to use the Herald somehow because they're actually down 700 gold and no one has died. Yeah. That is a lot of just gold from plates and farming. 100 Thieves have been able to pick up here in this early game. So we'll see where Svenskeren does want to drop the Rift Herald. Every time there's a control mage in the mid lane, I love using Rift Herald against it because they're going to be so good at actually protecting. And you'd hope that teams can keep this in mind because the meta has shifted so much towards these melee mid laners that are so action heavy that you forget how good an Orianna can be at just stalling out the game and buying time for 100 Thieves to get the team fights that they want. If you can take down that turret early on, it makes it so much harder for them to actually get into position for the dragon. And the longer they have to go from the lane to to the objective, the more time Danny and Jazuka can buy to poke away 100 Thieves. Fun little interactions there on the top side. Seems like there's a lot going on actually in Glen vs. Nah. But uh, unfortunately, uh, Udir and Glen vs. Nah is a very different matchup. Crumbs. Sunday maybe looks like he's going to get baited in here by Impact. Ooh, almost. Meg Mega Nah. Oh, now he knows. He's like, oh, nope. There's an Udir here, of course. Does have the flash. Great shove there for Sunday. Uses the ult to disengage. Going to be hit by the ulti, but he's going to flash. Should be just fine. Indeed, he will be. Ooh, yes. Yeah, still that deadly, though. The true damage on Gwen. You got to respect. It doesn't matter if you're Mega Nah. You got to get away from that one. And now the Rift Herald is in the top set, and you just burned a lot of HP. Jazuke has flash. Oh, there it is. The Shockwave, though, this time will be flashed by Jazuke, but a very nice equalizer trying to set it up. Still first blood on the table. They're going to go back after Sunday. Now a mini now. No flash, no hope. Oh, the hop. Maybe it's enough to cut it out. The grasp is pocket Sunday. How'd you live there, buddy? What an outplay out of Sunday. Now the rest of the team is collapsing. Do they? Ooh, He's barely out of there. gets out. He barely like, gets oh, out. I ain't staying around Ooh. here. Close is looking for him with the flame spitter on, but not going to find it. They just didn't have enough damage to take him out. There is not a priority on damage on these guys just yet. So someday, really nice play out of him to buy some time. And now Impact gets to burn the TP to leave the lane. So that's going to actually net a huge advantage for someday with minions denied, some tower plates. It's really looking good for 100 Thieves. No action yet, yet in just laning, they're building such a lead. Crumbs at 1,200 gold yeah. ahead. They're good. With no kills. 100 Thieves is no good. Kills. All right, they got good. They, the swaps they made in the split in the offseason have really been working for them. That's like, oh, we killed a tower <laughs> and got a bunch of good. It hasn't even happened yet. 100 Thieves is passively winning. Must feels pretty good. I want that passive. Yeah, you want to just be winning naturally. Your natural state is your lanes just win. And it started with something actually getting zoned off. If you remember how the Gwen versus Nar matchup, it looked tough. 
it looked really tough for Someday, but he's held on. This is one of his strengths. We always love seeing him play these carries, but so often is he underrated in his ability to just hold on to all the pressure that gets thrown at him and be effective in team fights after that one. Svenskeren's still on the top side. You gotta pop that Rift Herald soon though, so he's gonna be looking for lane action very soon. I'm losing it, Crumbs. I was like looking across trying to find Gangplank or Twisted Fate right. trying to figure out <laughs> nope. what happened with all this gold. Just landing, and look at mid too. 24 three, CS. Okay, I'm gonna flip out later. This is a mystery that we'll have to solve another time. As Svenskeren does indeed cash in the Herald for a couple of plates here on Impact. Great place to put the gold in, but who he is in pursuit to oh, be no. one. Svenskeren, is he gonna be the one to give up first blood? Abadog is here as well. The Rift Herald's dead! They didn't even get the plates, Crump! Shelly! They didn't even get the plates! Shelly got distracted! It's a tragedy! Poor Shelly, she saw the minions. She just tunnel visioned on him, had the blinders on, and there's no gold now. There's no gold over for EG. The one thing they were counting on, closer flashing he's out, out of there. <laughs> yeah, he's not giving anything back. As a jungler, when your lanes are just winning on their own, the last thing you want to do is just mess with that flow. You just want them to slowly continue to accrue these advantages, push when things are certain, and not give away any unnecessary kills. Jazuka doesn't have flash, so there is always an interest in looking for him to try to kill him, but he's been good at getting away. Right. In the meantime of my uh, attempt to solve the gold yeah. mystery, dragons have actually been split as well, so mountains over there for 100 thieves. It means it's infernal soul for this game, which is two thumbs up. Unfortunately, it means the soul is not going to be done nearly as quickly as our last encounter on stage. So it's going to be a bit more of a slower pace one for that particular objective. Mythics, though, are starting to be completed. We have an Eclipse now finished for Jazuke's Jace. Always nice. Definitely a big uh, additive as far as his oh, overall yeah. damage goes. You really want to have this item before you start fighting, but it doesn't seem like the teams are interested in going for these fights that aren't 5v5s. They just want to continue to accrue their items and then handshake on one big wombo opportunity. And these are the kinds of games that are really deadly. I love seeing the EGTL matchup where they actually were able to win through just mechanics in a team fight. Danny was still on that Ezreal back then, so I can see why they're counting on that. They can fall behind in the early lane. A thousand gold just from CSing. Not such a big deal that you're losing the game right there if you have full confidence in your ability to team fight later. The pressure is on, but this is not a team that shies away from that. I mean, I think Gwen and Ezreal definitely very scary as the game gets later, but we did highlight in draft crumbs. 100 Thieves. Talk about want to take 5v5 Wombo fights only? Yep. Yeah. That's exactly how they drew it up in draft. 100 Thieves. Certainly be happy if that's what's happening here as Abadaga does, I think, shield himself up at the last minute. But does get his recall canceled by pesky old Ezreal Svenskeren. Going for round two on Shelly this time. All right, second time. You might get to proc the Herald on a turret. So that's the goal here for Evil Geniuses because this is not going to get you plates. It's just going to get you an opportunity to whittle down one of these turrets. Mid has not taken enough damage to be taken down from here. And at least they're in a position to take the fight. But 100 Thief just doesn't care. They're happy farming. Their mid laner has built up a bounty just from farming. I tell you, Pastry, Abadage has really been showing off for 100 Thieves. This acquisition had some question marks as he wasn't the top of the top, the cream of the cream at the LEC, but here he is really thriving and coming into his own. I have never been happier to just kind of blindly first uh, pick a mid laner in fantasy than I have Riley, Abadaga. You did that? He's been paying off. I was, you know, all the, all the expected mid laners got taken out. I was like, man, the mid pool's kind of shrinking. Yeah. I need somebody early. I was like, you know what, I'll take the gamble. Actually, it was fun. The best things I had the choice between these two mid laners. I was debating just we give us Abadaga. So we'll see if perhaps my fantasy does not cash in as Ignar. Is he going to be the one first blooded here? 100 Thieves still looking for that extra burst of gold. Not yet, though. Ignar will be forced to ult and flash away. But he will get out safely. Single ultimate burn for burn. So Ignar doesn't have his, but the equalizer could be more valuable here as EG looks to set up their next play. Looking for the bot side, but Ignar is just roaming around, finding vision, not as confident. Svenskeren finally pops the ultimate. And because everybody made their way down, Someday was not in position. Yet 100 Thieves is still just taking more across the map. They already got that turret, although the Rift Herald will have to be respected if it is escorted up to the tier two. Yeah, bonus gold though goes to FBI. Gets that first tower bonus, which is a great thing for 100 Thieves. Wanted to get more gold onto the Kaiser that has not finished the Kraken Slayer. Closure is taking enemy camps. He's Pretty quickly, I imagine, approaching level 11, which is real nice for any rumble, whether you're jungle or lane. And we do have 45 seconds till this dragon is ready to go. Shelly this time gets the charge off on two towers, actually feeling good. 
As Huey looking for the ulti down on Jazuke, but someday oh. we're trying to dodge it, but Huey's right in there. Ignite, flash, slap on, oh! The Scoopy Whoopy, and Huey is going to grab the kill. Jazuke wanted to fight that. He wanted to try to take out someday in exchange for that. He could have flashed, he could have flash gated. There were all the opportunities to escape that play, but in Jazuke's decision to outplay, he gets burned for it. First Blood luckily goes over to Huhi, but still he burns his flash, and burning it now can hurt for this dragon. So he escorts the Rift Herald. That's fine. Does a lot of damage to Someday. And now you're not slowed, you're not in range, but instead of going, he goes for the Shock Blast. If that hit, maybe, maybe you actually do kill Someday. He was close to transforming, but he pays for it. A real denial there for somebody to slamming him back into the wall. Here we had the lockdown there with the flash empowered Q for the first stun. A hundred thieves continue to collect that bonus gold. Get the first tower, get the first kill. Really want this Drake though. Teams are going to be fighting forward as EG already hanging out in the river with the lights out there as hundred thieves will push through. Trying to make some space for themselves. The poke has to hit. That's already two shock blasts that don't have a lot of value. Ezreal and Jace really need to land this. They're getting shoved back because their cooldowns are down. Now 100 Thieves feels a bit better. They have all their ultimates available and have position in River. All right, 100 Thieves have kind of pushed their way through. They've got their vision down. They're going to start the Dragon and force EG to come to them. Sven Skarin, got to be careful with the ball. There's something almost retreads him. He's got Megan already back to go. And now it's impact. Yeah, you gotta get out of there. Skips around. Someday they're gonna transform and get in there. They're just gonna lead the dragon. They're gonna go for the fight instead. It's closer. Got knocked back by the Jace, I believe, but a good equalizer is impact. Gets ulti there by Leon. FBI's charging in there. Takes out impact as Hui goes golden to protect himself from a little bit of extra follow up damage. And now Abadaga finds one with the shockwave and forces the flash on the second as Fence Garen runs. But Ignar is not so lucky. 100 D just doing it all here. Is Jazuke gonna get finished off by Someday? They kited that fight so well, but yeah, we have we a need pause. A <laughs> we need a pause. We need a breather. They're not prepared Woo! for such a slow early game. It's too much action. More. This game, it's slow now, but I feel like it could get rapidly out of control. Yeah, I think the point you brought up at the beginning, that one of these teams is wrong. Right? One of these teams is just going to be objectively benefiting more from a slower game. They've been farming better, and if you can see on the screen, it looks like we are about to hop back into the game as Huhi is already playing. All right, there we go, Crumbs. Good eye. They'll spot it out. It's 100 Thieves. Win the fight. Going to win the Drake as well. They'll be the first to two Dragons this particular game. And to note, caveat there, uh, it's not like a measure of how wrong a team is, right? It's just, you yeah. know, even by a little bit, one team obviously has to, in most cases, has to be advantage as the game goes late. But both teams clearly investing in the late game. And 100 Thieves have invested, my goodness, that 1,000, 1,200 gold lead that they put up early, you know, that capital's really paid off, Crumbs. They're 4,000 gold ahead after that it's play. The, the mid advantage right now is starting to get pretty massive. It's about 50 CS in Abu Dhabi's pocket that Jazuke just doesn't have. And in that last fight, you know, that was the strongest point for Jazuke, where there is just not enough Shock Blast that had landed before. So 100 Thieves still tanking the Dragon, but a lot of poke is now hitting 100 Thieves. But look at how they're playing the front-to-back comp. They're just kiting away effectively, keeping their distance, ball zones from one side, engage on the members that are by themselves. And now you know who has Flash and who doesn't. Great flank from Abidage, and Jazuke, who gets caught out, goes a little bit too far forward, hunts for FBI, but he's just not giving him the opportunity. He burned his flash much earlier on the first blood, gets instantly pounced and killed. Yeah, who also pretty low there. So there was a kill potentially that he could have picked up, unfortunately, does not grab it. It's 100 thieves all the way right now here. 21 and a half minutes in or thereabouts, and they're just so far ahead. Even though the game is you know, opening up a little bit more, it's two to one in towers. You know, the Drakes are kind of split. 100 Thieves just getting all the gold. And again, it feels like this is the composition where, you know, they, they're happy for it to go even and take you on 5v5. But if they get ahead, it just feels so tricky to come back here. And Abadaga, just a star here in this game and also in this league. He is completely ready to take over. He's trying to just show how many different styles he's got. You've got the Karma, so supportive mid, the Assassin on the Akali, and now capable of playing team fighting composition. So they're just going around the block, just showing exactly what they can do. And all three looks have been really impressive. I won't lie, these have actually looked like all three compositions that 100 Thieves could say, these are our best strats. I don't like it. Makes fantasy big pan too hug. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm joking. I'm you got a dog. I love, that, I love that he's showing uh, different picks there. Ooh. Ooh, my goodness. A heist is on. 
FBI closes it. Maybe it's off. All right, we're off. Yep, Israel comes in there as well. Daddy's intuition, pretty good for the youngster. Does split out the 100 Thieves. We're uh, beginning the Baron, but 100 Thieves rapidly get off that one. Someday hopping all the way over Impact, but it was an escape hop. Yeah. There, get his way away from Gwen. There was no one on 100 Thieves really on the map. So with Abu Dhabi showing and then the Nar, they had vision on the blue side and no minion waves were crashing on 100 Thieves side. So EG's just does the math. Where could these guys possibly be? There's a Kraken Slayer already on FBI. Uh, Rumble does a lot of damage. Let's just check. Let's make sure that they're not trying to just pull a fast one on us. And it's a good look out of Danny. This is that solo queue kind of hunting at mindset that you have where you're just trying to make sure that the enemy doesn't get these random advantages that might be snuck out of nowhere. All right, well, also, we got, you know, Murman is on the way here for EG. We got actually finished already for Dezuki, so he's got two items. Uh, working on that for Impact, Nash of Tooth going to be on the way, of course. Uh, Muruman also now done for Danny, so nice timing there as they have completed pretty significant spikes for their side. But of course, 100 Thieves with the gold advantage are already ahead on items in their respective roles. But it is good to know that EG, you know, not too expensive as far as these builds go, but very effective at this point of the game. So perhaps in a minute 30, when the next dragon fight for this Infernal may erupt, EG will feel a little bit more comfortable taking some sort of fight. Yeah, they will, but more importantly, this next fight, it is imperative that the poke hits early, though. Huey goes in. He's already in on to Igna. Equalized it down as well. Huey's down. The rest of them, but he's so tanky, man. As Igna is going to be forced to flash the ulti as Danny. He's still doing damage. FBI's got to dodge. Does get out of the last two skill shots here. Fence Karen also running up, but someday he's the one we got to watch now. There's the rest of them are being chased. What a poke there. Onto FBI. Whoa. Now he's the target. It's Huey. It's going to lock up Kazuki. It's just too far forward. His closer is going to flash out of the way, but Impact, can he finish it off? No, he can't. As Danny can't quite get it either. As Abadaga once again solo kills Zeke now on the other side of your screen. As FBI is taking down Gwen. EG just diving too far forward into the rest of 100 Thieves. And there's just nothing they can do. As Svens Karen, he is trying so so hard for one killer's daddy. Oh. Can't even get that one. It is an ace across the rift as 100 Thieves clean up Evil Geniuses. That was a one-way ticket for Evil Geniuses into 100 Thieves' waiting arms. They thought they had a fight when 100 Thieves looks to go after Ignar, when the Equalizer gets dropped only after the Alistar. But there is just no way to engage on this comp. If Ignar isn't there, this might be a free kill for 100 Thieves, but instead they'll just back up. Oh! All right. Wait a minute. All right, gets one Just kill okay. uh, again. I don't know what else you're planning on doing, but you know what? Pray for <laughs> four, get some gold. You'll take it, I think, at this point. <laughs> yeah, heavy investment, but hey, you got some gold. Right, you, you got one, then you took down the Baron. Okay, there's something. There's something to show for it. It will still cost the dragon fight, though, as Thieves can make it back to the map on that one. That just shows you that this is a poke comp. Without the Alistar there, there's just no way to engage. It's only Udir, and he's not even close. So yeah, you punt out Uhi. Yes, some poke lands. And I think they got excited because Danny was landing some really good poke. FBI looked like they got caught. They have this speed shrine. Maybe we can keep chasing, but impact as an engage just isn't it. And Jazuke going in definitely is not it here. Going into three people, and then they're just completely routed. There's a Nar that's about to turn Mega behind them. They didn't get the kills that they wanted, and there's just nothing to do but to try to buy time, maybe salvage a play. Danny trying to make the most out of it here. Even burns his flash to go after closer, but the missed mystic shot was just barely out of range. Yeah. Naramaj is on the skill shots, but it is 100 Thieves with a clean ace at the end of it all. That is back-to-back -back fights where 100 Thieves have kited so well, Crumbs. 100 Thieves is just looking like our top team right now. I am looking forward so much to the rematch between this team and Cloud9. The first time around, it felt like Cloud9 really, really just asleep, struggling to wake up. But now, as both teams are really showing their true form, this could be the most contested matchup of the split so far. So nice, we get it thrice, Crumbs. That is one of the nice right. things about Triple <laughs> Round Robin. 100 Thieves are looking to clean up EG to finish off their weekend. As Abadaga is going to finish off this mid tower, this gold lead is getting real close to 10k ahead. There's still a minute left on the Red Bull Baron buff as well. As 100 Thieves just again 
doing it nice and administratively. No need to get too silly. Yeah, as long as they keep their eyes on Ignar, there's really not a chance that 100 Thieves can get engaged upon. That's what Ignar is known for, though, finding these flanks, but they're splitting him up. There's plenty of control wards, and uh, what can Svenskarian do against the Udia flank? Here? He's going to try, gets the uh, damage out. Good little bit of long-range poke. Who is there as well? That cuts him off for the equalizer. Does close it out. The Shockwave oh. catches the flash as well as FBI yeets on in for the kill. That's what happens when it's only Udir running at you. There's just no way to follow up the Shock Blast hit. But Abedage smartly already has an Hourglass. He had Flash available. He would have been caught on his own account if that actually worked. So, 100 Thieves happy to take the kill, continue to siege, and now they move Abedage to the top side. Three people in the mid lane. They still have who he's ultimate available if they want to disengage so they can stay on this push and make the most out of the Baron buff that is just now fading. It's coldly, that was unreal for 100 Thieves. 11k ahead at under 28 minutes. Looks like the Baron will wear off, so they'll finally take their reset. Looking for that Infernal Soul in 2 minutes 50, if they even need it. Crumbs, FBI is still in the way of the enemy red buff. Everyone's going to go back and spend their money, and it's already three items done for both the Orianna and the Kaiser. And basically, we'll go the Rumble, we'll give it to him. He's got the Silk Shoes. Yeah, and... There's four stopwatches now on the 100 Thieves carries. Only Leona doesn't have one. You're just not doesn't gonna catch one. anyone. It's just not gonna happen. They're going to stay alive. They're gonna buy time in these fights. They have the survivability with their own abilities. So this is exactly the time where you want to be buying these defensive tools. When you're really far ahead, it'll allow you to tower dive, to be aggressive, and just close out the game in the final moments. I love seeing this kind of itemization when you're ahead. When you're behind, you don't need defensive stats. You just need more damage. Here, you just make sure that the opportunities for even geniuses to actually come back are almost zero. Yeah, Thornmail finished for someday two minutes and counting to this Infernal Soul here, which feels like it'll be the capstone on the 100 Thieves victory. EG gonna have to have some consecutive miracles to keep this game <laughs> going, but anything is possible, Crumbs. Yes, consecutive miracles. Multiple consecutive miracles is what they need. And Ignar has to be the savior that rains down from the heavens and find these. And you're going to have to catch multiple targets at the same time. They might be going after someday here, but he's fast. It's a good start. Stride Breaker Rock gets slowed off by the Chilling Smite. Hops around now. Impact, the one he didn't expect coming around the corner. Someday with the Flash does use it, but I think he's still going to be caught. The stun is there. That should seal it. Someday can't get out this time. Goes into Stasis because the Thieves are rushing down the base and Someday's just trying to buy a time. It is Impact that finally finds that shutdown. But 100 Thieves will trade his life for that mid in him. Good timing out of EG exactly when Someday got exhausted. If he hadn't been in mini form guaranteed, pops that ultimate, shrugs them off as he's, as he's done in the laning phase earlier. It does come at the cost of that mid inhibitor. They're lucky that there was no wave in the bot side for them to get another. So EG does find something to hold on to this game. But that kill, the death timer on it, won't matter for this dragon. So 100 Thieves will still have five members up for this next fight that EG will really need to take. You do not want to be giving Infernal Soul, but you're caught between the rock and the hard place. 10,000 gold down and nowhere to flank. That means the engage will be telegraphed. It'll be so obvious where Ignar is coming from. And we've already seen how well 100 Thieves fought in a fight that looked just like that. Yeah, now that it's so far ahead that the fight can be a little less good than that and probably still the full advantage in any sort of 5v5. But EG, as you said, they have to fight for it, Crumb, so they will. Almost 10 seconds until the Dragon is up and ready to go. But EG are here on time. Someday also has made his way back, didn't die at an awkward timer, which was nice for him, but did lose his flash off the back of that play. Gonna have to build up the rage here in mid as well. 100 Thieves just zoning EG off this dragon. They don't need to start it. They don't no rush. Like, if EG get this dragon, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, they have no interest in this whatsoever. They just want EG to overextend, to make some mistakes. They already have the scuttle. This will really help them. Already, though, not much poke from EG has landed, and the carries already have a better position to avoid it. And Svenskaren is taking a little bit too much poke. Ignar going for a flank. Oh, good attempt steal, but they still got it. The smite is good for closer. And now Ignar just caught out slow by the ulti at the end of it all. And Someday's just looking for it. Who is diving in there with a the Zenith blade? Crunch on top by Someday seals Ignar's fate. And 100 Thieves not even walking down me. They're just going to go straight to Baron. Now EG have to fight 4v5. Even phase checking this feels so dangerous. They have no way of getting vision. It's just going to be oh. a free Baron. Look at the DPS. Thieves. MMO Champions, 100 Thieves taking down the Raid Boss, Baron will fall. 
100 Thieves now, not even going to reset. Just going to go straight with the Baron buff and try and do as much damage as they can. Their item advantage is ginormous. Look at FBI. How do you kill this guy? He's got GA and the stopwatch now, so you already have everything you could possibly want. They're just going to continue to pressure in with Jazuka in the bot side. He now has to base. They don't know that impact is up here, but he's going to make it slow to this timer to defend the turret. 100 Thieves will surely start knocking away at the second inhibitor. And with nobody here to defend it, they're going to get it quickly. They're trying to just maximize the Baron power that they have. And uh, goodbye, Tower, indeed. FBI going to shoot that down. Already onto the inhib. Does get poked out a little, but not really enough here. And again, 100 Thieves just so strong. Baron buff, Infernal Soul. Way too much gold ahead at this point. EG going to have to try and defend here at their Nexus. 100 Thieves are moving in for the kill. That's the Equalizer. Gwen goes in, already popped the Shroud, so there's no way to fight it now. Oh my god, the tile's just melting here. FBI just shooting him. Unafraid, he's got Barons everywhere. Spence Garen just gets killed by FBI. And now the rest of the fight will begin, but it's so one-sided. EG, not much left they can do, but they'll try as Impex going to get slain by and close. FBI diving in again, getting low, but that's not dead. And EG are going to fall as 100 Thieves will claim the Nexus. Oh, but Duncan lives. He doesn't die again. My fantasy! He, he, he doesn't did die. It. The stopwatch right at the very end to keep three games in a row, the whole week without a single death for Abadagi. Three different, well, two different champions thus far, but just an incredibly impressive display out of 100 Thieves, knowing where their composition would be strong and executing on it exactly how it was drafted to. Thank you for the points. More importantly, thank you very much for the entertainment. 100 Thieves look amazing, Crumbs. Uh, hard to overstate just how well this team has looked in the early stages of the LCS summer. EG definitely always a fun one to watch, but this matchup just looked like there was nothing they could do. 100 Thieves are so on form with their new yeah. mid laner. EG needed to really win that first dragon fight. They needed the poke to land. The early game could have been a bit better. They missed some opportunities for some kills, but still that fight was where the gold was most even. That was where they needed to make their mark. Falling behind there, losing so many kills, made it nearly impossible to then team fight. You saw Ignar. He was entirely guarded the whole time. He couldn't even make a final stand at the end. Alistar and Udir, not entirely the most powerful combination to engage. Lacking the words for it, just because it's only been scaring dashing in, and without the cow to back him up, he's just a, a man bear pig running at you that doesn't do a whole lot yeah. anymore. If you can't find flanks, as you said, uh, if Ignar just doesn't have the angle, it's very challenging for them to find an engage. And I feel like we saw that, whereas for 100 Thieves, just click on the equalizer. Find a shockwave. Yeah. I don't know. Have who he yeah. flashes there. <laughs> Someone <laughs> will find the fight because you just have so much ease of execution on your composition. It's one thing that I love teams that prioritize it because it just guarantees that even if you do fall behind, you can have ways to come back. And even though, obviously, the late game fights were very one-sided because the gold advantage was so large, how 100 Thieves got there? Go back and watch those two team fights there where they're kiting around two different, I think might have been the same objective, but that first one around Dragon right before the pause and then the other one, I think, up near Baron. 100 Thieves were getting like relentlessly attacked by EG and just figured out every little thing to get, I think, two clean aces uh, in both different situations. That is very impressive team fighting from 100 Thieves. Team fighting that had no prior altercations. They were just farming. They were just chilling, laning. So that's the kind of situation where the coach just tells you, listen, you know what your game plan is? Is, farm it up, play the fights effectively. We got this. We got it from the draft. This is what was picked for you to do, and they executed on it. Already three different looks, all three quite polished from 100 Thieves. You know, at some level, it's like, you know, is this just like your meta strategy? Are you like, EJ going to play into us? You know what? Yeah, they we'll, do. We'll, <laughs> let, it, we'll, let, him, they we'll let him do it, right? EG loves just going in, and I think that it's just not the mid pick. I know we're going to harp on Jazuki constantly, but. He looks just so much better on the champions that actually want to jive, to jump in, to dive in. He did it a few times on the Jays just out of desperation because they couldn't have the team fights that they really wanted to. And so I just think falling back more on the kinds of champions that really line up with that style will be more successful for them. Obviously, you can look back and say the play just wasn't there, right? The execution could have been better, but it's also about aligning up with what your players are best at. And look, 
hard matchup, right? 100 Thieves are very, very good at this stage. Every player feels like they're playing well. They've shown us a ton of different looks. Coach feels like he's really, you know, whipping the players into shape, which is impressive given that this is, you know, somewhat a new roster, having a new, clearly very talented mid laner, but a new player nonetheless having to integrate into the roster. So for right now, 100 Thieves feel like they can do basically no wrong. Everything looked good this weekend. Yeah. It's, it's a new mid laner, yet it sometimes feels like the whole 100 Thieves squad was just built to wait for Abidage. They were just... It's the soulmate mid laner that they were looking for this whole time, and finally it's coming together. So it seems like everybody's just so eager to integrate it, and it's looking really well. It's making everybody else look good. Well, Crumbs, I have great news for you and all the fans at home because we are going to be tossing it over to Dash and Abadaga for our Verizon.